There are three ways to manage water. We can regulate use, we can retire uses, and we can reinforce supply. Do nothing, Kansas sues us. Within this bill, it talks about four ways to come into compliance. That is surface water purchases, that's vegetation removal, that is um, quick response buyouts, and uh, maybe it was three. I got to think here a minute. But anyway, from my standpoint, how important it is that we move forward with this bill in a timely fashion uh, so that we send the message to not only our neighbors to the south in the state of Kansas, but to folks in the basin that there's going to be some certainty in your world. Let me just first say that, damn, I don't understand water, I don't water, I don't, and, and, and I understand that we're short of it in the Republic or why, uh, and I trust my uh, natural resource district as well as, and, and including Senator Christensen, I trust they know how to fix the problem, and I trust that they will do it fairly, uh, but I don't know that. Senator Erdman said we should ask questions, and and as a, a literary or a literal, excuse me, a literal uh, look at this at this document, I need to ask some questions, uh, and have been doing that off the floor. I've been talking to Senator Loudon and the Speaker, as well as as members from the NRD. Uh, and uh, one of the concerns I have is is the amount that, uh, and, and we have information that's been furnished us by email and other sources as to what uh, the amounts that may be paid for these temporary water easements are. Are you? When I uh, conducted a, an issues poll in the district last year, my urban uh, constituents ranked water policy among the top ten issues facing the state. But to be honest, they didn't seem to like using general funds to deal with the problem. I think that there are some things we need to do to begin a proper analysis of this difficult problem. And we need to begin by asking some fundamental questions. First, how do we get in the mess we're in? And the way we answer that has a lot to do with the second question, and that is who should pay the cost of the solution and is the solution being proposed a fair one? And finally, how do we make sure all the participants in this proposal are held accountable? Mr. President, members of the legislature, I want to engage in a little uh, exercise before I speak to the amendment. This, the 10th day in April, I'm in the chamber, you see, listening to Senator Chambers read his poetry so eloquently. We are here this week to address water and pray the Republican flows and grows as it winds eastward before off to Kansas it goes. Senator Chambers, you didn't get that kind of reaction. <laughs> this is the hardest pill to swallow in a tough solution uh, because it is a commitment by the legislature to granting authority to a basin that needs to uh, tap into a source of revenue to help protect our water resources, comply with the interstate uh, compact, and but most importantly, keep the uh, area economically viable. I believe as a state we need to do something, and this is we finally found a direction that uh, we can go and start going down the road to uh, address a problem that we have in this state. So I think it's very important that we move forward with something and, uh, and start down that road. We might change things a little bit or tweak things down the road, but I believe it's very important that we start down that road. I got up on this particular part of the bill is because I know that um, $7.7 .7 million is going to be appropriated out of the general funds if we pass this bill for the first year. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> and $4.7 million for the second year. And I'm thinking, but what happens to the urban water issues in all of this? I don't think I'm going to vote for this bill unless I see some way to in 
to address the urban issue of stormwater because that's going to be that's going to be a healthy ticket item too for the urban areas. So it's hard to ask my constituents to help pay for um, rural water issues if we're not going to address the urban water issues. And that's where I'm coming from at right now. I can be convinced otherwise, perhaps, but. I just wanted to put that into the thought processes here. Mr. President, members of the body, <clears throat> I support the bill. We do need to do something, and I support general funds paying for this, and we do need to find a way to pay general funds back. I stand to say if we're going to use cigarette tax, I am going to stand here and talk a long time. We just went through a big talk about how terrible secondhand smoke is, how terrible cigarettes are, but when we can use their tax money, they're good enough. Amazing to me. I don't think that that is anywhere to go to try to get money for this issue. I don't know how that got dreamed up, and I don't like it. Let's pick on something else. I don't know what. But we can dream something up. I just, I just don't see where we can even draw a line on those two. I also really don't like the checkoff program because the checkoff program was started to help sell corn. It's an advertising tool. This is not for advertising the corn. I agree that... Uh, Someone's going to need to pay for it, and I think everyone needs to pay for it. We all use water. There's some industry that use an enormous amount of water. There's municipalities that use an enormous amount of water, and it is a state program. So I think that we need to sit down and try to find a way that we can all chip in and help, help pay this out. The checkoff plan again I don't think is the way to go we have dry land farmers that uh, produce about uh, well about half the acres in the state are dry land corn and they produce maybe about 40 percent of the crop 35 to 40 so then the dry land farmers that grow corn are also going to have to put in to the checkoff uh, I guess my question is could we try to go per gallon used I don't know maybe that seems too simplistic or how are we going to to do all that how are we going to meter the wells how are we going to do any of that uh, should it cost more if you're irrigating or should it cost less if you're uh, uh, making drinking water I don't know but those are the questions that I have if we're all using water let's help out the situation and not try to put the the whole brunt of it on one set of of the people in the state thank you mr president i do think the urban areas need to participate and and it is a nebraska problem i think we've uh, natural resources and, and people have worked hard that we have a nice coalition of everybody contributing here and i do think money should come from the general fund to help support this um, but when i did hear that i have some concerns and yeah, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves in the budget process, and many of us will be learning how that works, uh, many new senators, but uh, I do have a little concern if, if some of this funding is going to come from uh, cigarette taxes, which, which I think, like I say, we've been usually using those for health care issues and other things, and, and uh, relying on that, if that's kind of where we're going, I don't agree with. I, I think we should uh, find something in the budget and uh, take our licks and, and find out whatever we need to get it from, but I, I kind of would lean against if, if that's where we're going. And maybe I misunderstood that, but um, I just wanted to, to rise and say that because the next thing you know, we, we like I say, in urban areas, we have stormwater issues that are uh, unfunded mandates that are tremendous, tremendous amount of money. And is it the next thing that we want to add a few more cents for that and this and that? So, um, but I just wanted to rise and support. I do commend everyone. Um, so far, a lot of work and effort has gone into this. I'm looking forward uh, to more discussion. My friends, the tables have been turned, and, and it's the state now talking about $2.7 million general fund appropriation this year and next year and ongoing until 2018 for the Water Resources Cash Fund, uh, which could be used in other basins across the state down the road. And then the $3 million that's in this uh, goes to 
buy out water in the Bosphorus Irrigation District. I really think we have to really focus on the fact that these irrigators and the folks in southwest Nebraska have come to the table, and we need to do what we can to make this work, given how far they've come. And I'll make this comment. If you don't like AM 963, you're going to hate a court order and judgment that the state of Kansas has. If you don't like paying $3 million here and $2.7 million here, you're not going to like the unconscionable number we could see down the road. And I think it's important to note that our options aren't that great. And the other thing that I want to mention, and I don't think we've tied this into the rest of the picture, but agriculture under the bill as amended and proposed is doing its part. Corn checkoff at seven-eighths of a cent, property taxes and increases and occupation tax increases in the Republican River Basin. This isn't a situation where we have a corner of the state freeloading off the rest of us. This is a situation we have in a corner of the state at the table finding solutions to a problem that all Nebraskans will pay for if we don't find the solution now. Granted, there's an incentive for the folks in the Republican Basin to be at the table because the other option for them is zero water. And if you want to watch a corner of Nebraska wither up during the toughest of economic times where land values plummet, that's what we're heading for if we don't get serious about this. So I've seen the movement in Senators Carlson and Christensen in what has been a very difficult consideration and decision for them to come to the table and to suggest to them that they're not worthy of the appropriations outlined in AM 963, quite frankly, I think it's a little offensive because they are at the table working through a problem. I will also not be too timid in asking for the state to continue to help and maybe help even in a greater way. But we appreciate what's being considered now. We appreciate this opportunity. And so, again, I look forward to the remainder of the discussion. I have a concern. This is being billed as a matter that is driven by the necessity of dealing with an emergency in the Republican River Basin. I think the point is being made by Senator Chambers that there are others who are interested in this discussion, and I think that's a point well taken. I wasn't invited to attend the meeting that Senator Langemeyer held either. And so I have done my homework and researched the legislation and have asked questions, and I think that's an appropriate part of this process. But I think we need to step back, though, and figure out, again, how we arrived at, at, this, at this place in our state's history. We don't have to do this. But in the event that nothing gets done, guess who stands to foot the entire cost? All of Nebraska. One minute. Urban. doesn't matter the source. We will stand on the floor of the legislature as we did three years ago and say, we're going to write a $45.3 million. The provisions of 701 are not simply designed only to solve problems in the Republican basin. I would argue, and I think it would be an effective point, that had we been more attentive to the needs to manage water, we'd be in a better situation. The reality of the drought that we have been in in western Nebraska for the last seven years has contributed greatly to the problems that are now being exposed. And in light of that, there are other issues most of the money, as I read LB 701, is geared towards the solution in the Republican Basin, and there are funds available for the state of Nebraska to comply with the 13-year and other long-term goals that cooperative agreements and other proposals have in other basins. Time. It is broad approached, and it is in other proposals have in other basins. Time. It is broad approached, and it is long overdue. Thank you, Mr. President. There is, there is something that has not been communicated uh, adequately, in my opinion, and I'm going to spend just a moment to do that. Uh, somewhere in the state of Kansas right now, there's somebody watching the deliberations in the Nebraska legislature, and I hope it's recognized that uh, the efforts, the time, the energy, and the debate that's being put forward in this legislature represents uh, a good faith effort on, on behalf of the people of the state of Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska is doing a lot to honor our commitment, and I hope Whoever has the uh, who has the task of watching this down in Kansas will make note of that. I hope the record reflects that. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. President. 
We could solve the Republican Basin's problems tomorrow by shutting down irrigation. But the financial impact would be huge. Estimates by the NRDs may be high, I would say probably are high, but the lower Republican district estimates a $182 million reduction in land value if irrigation shut down on 140,000 acres. There's a lot of people that aren't here that should be. We've discussed a little bit about the stormwater issue. I just find it incomprehensible that that would be removed after the hard-fought battle we had last year to get any money at all. And to suggest that somehow you can tax cigarettes to pay for that is, is almost an insult. That's as much as the water problem in this state as any of these irrigation problems. We have to continue the farm economy. We have to continue irrigation, but not at the pace that we're doing it. We have to pay for the problems that we have in the Republican Valley, but we've got to keep others. One minute. There are other compacts. There's a compact with the Blue River Basin with Kansas. Right now, they're maybe three feet above having a problem, and they're doing some studying about it. I give them credit for that but it'd be very easy to slide another such problem. We have to take care of this issue and we have to slow down the pace that we're pumping water from our aquifers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Chambers, with his introduction of two words, has introduced a concept that reminds me of another two words, Molotov cocktail. And that's where we find ourselves this afternoon. I don't feel that uh, people in my district, in the northern part of my district, they, they cannot irrigate. Their water level is about 290 feet down under the surface. They barely can get a farm well. And if we ask them to pay a little bit more of their, their checkoff dollar, I think we're we're pointing the finger at them and saying, you know, you people have got to help solve the problem. The way we need to help solve this problem is the state to do it and the people in the area. I don't feel that the, the people that are barely surviving with dryland crops, yes, dryland crops have been fairly good the last several years in my area, but there is no guarantee whether you're going to raise one bushel on a dryland crop. Yes, technology now does make our yields somewhat better. But I am totally opposed to an increase in the checkoff of the, the corn and the grain sorghum. 